بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على طهر طاهر العلم الظاهر المنصور المؤيد بالقاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are now currently busy with lesson number four a continuation of the other three that was done and we'd like to continue inshallah with a, with a topic of the tafsir of al-fatiha we are still with al-fatiha we are still discussing al-fatiha we are still discussing uh, you know tafsir for example and the methodology which we are employing let us first say as Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran, uh, Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiyan, that Allah has revealed it in a Arabic Quran. So our first, our departure, our first point of departure is going to, we need to have at least a command of the Arabic language. We need to understand the phenomena in the Arabic language and then we also will add to the tafsir. So at first, which is very important, is what we call manhajul lughawi. The methodology, a linguistic methodology is what we have to employ, have to embark upon. And then we will add, inshallah, the tafasir as it is and as it was done by our esteemed mufassirin. May Allah, inshallah, raise their stature, those who have passed on and those who are currently still alive. May Allah prolong their life and give lots of barakah in their lives, inshallah, so that they all benefit humanity, inshallah. We were discussing the last time Surah Al-Fatiha and we were at we were at the Bismillah Rahman Rahim where we have said that Allah Azza wa Jal started with the Bismillah al basmala as it is known with the Bismillah Rahman Rahim and that is obviously with the Kasra where it is the Baal Isti'ana the Baal Musahaba it means that the Ba where you are imploring, you are beseeching, you are asking assistance, you are asking that that assistance must also accompany you. So with that being said, and we've said that the ism has a meaning, which means also the name of Allah, and ism also comes from the word sima, or sumo, sumo meaning, Majesty, meaning majesty, meaning magnificence, okay, meaning magnificence. This is so. When we deal with that, it will read in the name of Allah, which is also correct, or in the other, it means also in the majesty of Allah, Azza wa Jal. And last week, we have explained also the various meanings of the name Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah, the one who is worshipped, the one who is worthy of worship, the one which we seek refuge in, the one we fall in love with, the one which we, our ruh, and we live in there from Sakana, for example, and Wali'a, um, wala and that is also, uh, you know, Takhabba the one who is not so hundred percent known why as if Allah has hidden himself a bit for us so that we should embark upon a road of discovery and we'd like to emphasize or underline the word of discovery and that is we need to discover Allah Allah is not so easily known we need to use our aql and other means of discovering al haqqul mutlaq the absolute truth, which is Allah. And then last week we have said we will continue this week with Ar-Rahman Rahim 
and that is our installment for today. And we'd like to mention that um, we will deal with each word first, analyze it linguistically as it is understood in Arabic language, fi asrin nas, at the time when, when the text, the Holy Quran was revealed, we need to go and refer and go back to that Arabic, not the Arabic of, of today. So asrin nas, the Arabic, at the time of the nas, at the time of the text, the Holy Quran, that is important, especially how the Quraysh use the Arabic language at the time. So let us come with Rahma. When we have Rahma, for example, Rahma, it means mercy. And if we have Rahman, Rahman, that is on the wazn in Arabic of Fa'lan. Fa'lan. Okay, and that is Mubalagha. What is Mubalagha? It is extending it. It is reaching out even further. So when Allah referred to himself as Rahman, he is Rahman. When Allah says that he is Rahman, he's Rahman for all. As the hadith of Imam Sadiq, Imam Sadiq Salamullah Alayhi says, Rahman ism khas li sifatin aam. Rahman is a special name meant for any general situation. Rahma is then Allah is Rahma and mercy on everybody, Muslim and non-Muslim. Believer and non-believer, everybody experience the rahmah, the mercy, the compassion of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then when we have the meaning of rahim, rahim, that is ism khas, uh, sorry, ism am li sifatin khas. And that means it's a general name, but for specific. He is a specific, there is specific, specificity to it. Okay, and we will explain that now. This is, for example, if we, have in, we have in some of the du'as, Ya Rahman of dunya, Allah is the Rahman of dunya, but Allah is the, rahi, the Rahim of Akhirah. So, when we, this is general, if I can make like this, this is Rahman. Okay, and the circle inside, Rahim. That is special. Special Rahman. For example, as we said here, everybody experience the Rahman of Allah. Muslim and non-Muslim, believer and non-believer, no problem. But when you have, and when you have developed, and if your tap is a bit open, wide open, if I can use that analogy, that, uh, if I can use that analogy, our taps currently, when we speak about the noor we are allowed in our hearts, okay? For us, you know, the tap is, is open very little. But our masters, the Anbiya, our Imma alayhimu salam, salamullah alayhim ajma'in, all of them, they experience rahimiyya. They experience because their tap, their tap is open. That's why they have karamat. So when we allow ourselves from the stage of Rahman and then with khushu, with reverence, etc., then we go to the stage of Rahimiya. Rahimiya, specific. Or if I can say so in another term, this is the general practitioner, the GP. And this one here, that's now the specialist. 
in medical terms. Okay, so here, that is your GP. Here is your GP. Allah is Rahman, general, but when we have specific, when it's that, special cases, these are your Anbiya, your Imams, the other masters, for example, you know, who have walked this planet, Salam Allah, Salam of Allah on all of them. These are your, they, these, this is your specialist. So, with that being said, Allah introduces himself in the Basmala already with Rahmah. As we have it in Dua Kumail, where uh, Hazrat Amir Salamullah Alay expressed Allah wasi'at rahmatahu kulla shay. His rahma encompasses everything. So there Allah introduces himself as the only reality. al haqqul mutlaq And Allah here is the one that exists. Let me just explain here something further. Okay? Allah is the only reality. There is no other reality other than Allah. He exists, as Allah says to the Holy Prophet. Uh, Holy Prophet, where it, where it was, Qul, Hu Allah, O Muhammad, that is Fa'al Amr, He is Allah. Now there is no is in Arabic. But the word is, it comes from the word in Farsi, which is as. Or has, for example. If I say, for example, if I ask you, where is John? Then, uh, then the answer is usually, for example, John is in the house, for example. Okay? But this sentence, remember, in Arabic, they, we, we have Muqtada and Khabar. We have to refer to the Arabic, understand it first in Arabic before we can, we can branch out into other sciences. And we will explain that as we go along. In English, for example, we say John is in the house or wherever. Okay? Or it can be any person. Okay? Now, there's something missing here. And what is that? For if John exists or is present in the house. So that is here is instead of exist or is present. That's how we understand it. But because of we are a bit lazy and we've omitted the exist or present. So that is understood but not written. So the actual word here is, for example, John exists in the house. Or, for example, John is present in the house. That's the actual understanding. But we usually omit it because of our reasons, whatever our reasons were. Now, why? When we say Allah is, Allah, if I can write it, is. This is actually instead of Allah exists. Allah is in Arabic, wujud, existence. And something else is mawjud, exist. And something else exists now. We need to understand the difference between the two. There ought to be existence first before something can exist. Are you with us? For example, the plant, the tree, the pen, the board, all of these things, us, this dunya, everything, 
derive its existence from who? From Allah. Sifatul Ain, Sifatul That. This is the Sifa. Existence is Allah. And everything else exists by virtue of existence. Therefore, you insan, when you are Bismillah, you exist by virtue of the one that exists, which is existence, which is Allah. Azza wa jal, jalla, jalala. You do not have an independent existence. No. You, your source, you come from existence, which is Allah. So, Allah is not, as we say, uh, as we say that he is a result of existence and that is wrong. Then that means something else exists before Allah and, the, and that's a problem. We know obviously Allah is existence and by virtue of this he exists bidatihi. He exists by his own essence. So insan, let us go back to the Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Ba was revealed to insan from a lower to a higher. By aid of, by virtue of the magnificence or the name of Allah, you derive your existence from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah is Rahman. Allah did not say Jabbar, Al Mutakabbir, Al Khalik, Al Bari, Al Muntaqim. Allah, any of the other Sifat, Allah did not say that. He introduces himself as a God of Rahmah. And that Rahmah will continue. It's continuing. There's no limit to it. And with that, inshallah, we, we will cut that year until year only. And next week we will continue. And then we will come back again to the whole surah. Explain how Surah Al-Fatiha is divided into several parts. The first part is, is Tawheed Al-Uluhiyya, or where there is Tawheed in the Godness, where Allah explains He is the only one. There is none but Him, as it is explained and written and revealed here already. But inshallah, that we will leave it for the next installment. We ask you kindly to follow this methodically, to follow it in its sequence and understand it as we have explained it by one installment after the other. So, so today's installment was a follow-up of the previous and then inshallah today's in, and then next week's installment will be a follow-up of the previous of today's etc so that you understand it in that context and please we ask you that um, um, we first employ the manhaj lughawi the linguistic ex, um, definition the linguistic methodology and from there we will branch out into the various other methodologies of tafsir which we didn't come to yet but inshallah, as we go along, we have to say we are not here. We're not here to complete a syllabus also in a particular time frame. We will take our time. We will take our time to finish this inshallah too. And we do it to the best of our ability. May Allah open our hearts for the Holy Quran. May Allah open up our understanding for the Holy Quran. May Allah open up that we worship him by virtue of the Holy Quran, that we interact with each other by virtue of the Holy Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.